Hello and welcome back and that's right today we want to discuss the somewhat shaky but sort of inevitable news that we've known for a while about the Netgear Ready Cloud service being suspended now in around about a month and a, t and a half time. Now this is something we sort of already kind of knew about in the background but fair play to Jason Hamlin who got in contact with us in the free advice section who kind of brought it to my attention that it was happening so soon. This is something we heard about at the start of the year and the date kind of periodically changed. More, more on that later on but the big takeaway from this is Nick Gear have not exactly made a lot of noise that quite a substantial part of their router and NAS business particularly for the you know legacy or even I would say not quite legacy devices in the Nighthawk series are about to lose quite a fundamental access component now if you go to the Nick Gear ready cloud page as you can see here on screen you have to really kind of look all the way up the top here and there is our warning there at the top with regards to the Ready Cloud system uh, being deactivated there. Now, just as they state, this does not mean you are losing access to your device. What this is, is the portal remote access point w w working as a remote tunnel that allowed you to communicate remotely uh, with your NAS or your Netgear router system there. And in this video, we can sort of go through the status quo of where things are, sort of alternatives and stuff like that. And this doesn't just go to alternative to Netgear, but for those of you that want to keep hold of your Netgear, uh, some of the alternative uh, recommended ways in which you can still establish that contact. But it's worth bearing in mind that communication with your uh, uh, older generation Netgear products, we're not really talking about Orbi and stuff like that, um, those devices you're going to have to break down your level of access to remote control and sharing because these are going to be two very different uh, means post ready cloud but going back to the publication of that date and the sharing of it there to say that netgear have not exactly been loud about it would be an understatement it was kind of floating around in the background but they've not really pushed things that much there are some users in the community forums there over at netgear that have highlighted they have received information about it but, as you can see, the date changed ever so slightly. But apart from that, a lot of users didn't realise it was happening until they saw this banner at the top, which, frankly, is actually quite easy to miss if you're already going in via an established portal point. Now, a lot of people are sort of talking about where to go next. And at the end of this video, we will talk about hardware options. When it comes to software options, the first thing you want to know is, are you affected? Uh, if you are using any of the ReadyNAS um, platforms, pretty much all of those are affected if you head over uh, to this link here and again all of these will be linked in the description all of the full list of affected uh, netgear routers and nas systems currently supported uh, in their system of either the router system uh, again some of those nighthawks as well or you're using the ready nas os i believe up to version 6 right now here's a full list of affected devices there but this was updated last year but there's not really been any hardware releases in that family so it's still pretty relevant on top of that um they sort of are talking a little bit more about how you're going to lose it but again even with regard to these updates this is the only kind of support page i could find and the dates are wrong on it um now the first thing you're going to need to do if you want to move away from um the using that ready cloud system now rather than waiting for the cut off moment there you're going to have to look at certain ways and means now these will come into once again that whole idea of file sharing and remote access there and different tools are going to be better suited to those needs and also it's worth highlighting that the majority of them although they do arrive with free tiers to get to the full extent of uh, encryption level and wide access that you were being afforded by ready cloud you may need to go for some of the paid subscription options but first thing you'll need to do is enter in the model id of your nas let's pick one at random i'm just going to go for that one there and enter your product id so we can see here this is a router and you can see about any of the uh, options for downloads that are made available to you but some of the nas systems will allow you to download some of their apps now the apps are going to be for a greater or lesser extent very very important now it's built on uh, uh, linux debian and with that support and um kind of uh, uh even third parties as well uh, kind of reverse engineering their applications or tailoring their applications to older generation firmwares and linux distos it's going to be limited and the result is that even their own app center is actually a little sparse 
But when it comes to some of the more customized installs or using some of the third party options out there for VPN tunnels, whether it's going to be built on some of the newer stuff like WireGuard or some of the older generation stuff, your real kind of entry point is going to be using containers. Um, you're going to want to use uh, something like Portainer, which is a slightly more polished uh, front end for you to access a Linux, uh, sorry, a, a Docker and container-based registry. And from there, you'll be able to find a lot of the apps and services. And not only I talk about, but some of the ones talked about in some of the support pages that I've linked in the description. So that's probably gonna be one of your main ports of call. And if you head to this uh, download page, you just bear in mind that not all um, Netgear NASes are built equally, notwithstanding the CPUs that are used inside them. There is a question of how much memory is included there. So some of these services can get a little bit resource hungry. So bear that in mind. And um, when you do use Portain, again, that's not your only option. From there, you'll be able to go and use the search registry to find existing installs for different VPN methods to establish that remote connection with your device but do bear in mind that again that is the remote connection you are establishing there not file sharing that's a very different kettle of fish there now um, one of the earliest options to go for there is open vpn open vpn as you can see it's pricing structure you've got the free option there there is the paid uh, monthly so it depends whether you're using this for home or business but you can really break down into the services you're going to need and again all of the things I'm talking about right now, the, the three options here that I'm going to discuss, all of them to a greater or lesser degree are either usable as a container on some systems that can be deployed in of itself uh, within the container, or some of them are uh, used in conjunction with other ones, such as when we talk about WireGuard and its integration with things like Nord. Um, so again, OpenVPN is probably going to be although the, not the most high performing, a little bit more resource intensive, probably one of the more straightforward options for many of you, but going for some of the WireGuard assisted stuff. And again, that's where you're going to have to look into the containers uh, to deploy. And there's loads of guides online. And indeed, if you go to WireGuard, they've got a breakdown of all of their individual installers, uh, which you're probably going to need to create and install on local devices, not only the NAS itself, depending on the remote port you go for. But once again, we're still talking really about remote connection rather than file sharing, which means if you're a router user, things are pretty good. But if you're a ready NAS user, this is only half of the predicament you find yourself in. Same goes if you're going to be using zero tier. A lot of these do allow file sharing and sharing of links, but not in the way that you're going to be um, you know, used to with regards to using that really nice cloud. So again, zero tier, uh, WireGuard supported VPNs or uh, connected VPNs that utilize the more efficient architecture and encryption. And of course, as mentioned earlier on OpenVPN, all of them, again, their pricing will be linked below. I don't, they're not affiliated, I don't make any money out of those. Just use those links, find out which one's best for you. Um, now, the last option you've got, and this should only 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 be considered if one you are network savvy which unfortunately because of the way netgear presents itself uh, arguably a lot of the entry level stuff for netgear is is, is presented in a non-techie form and much like wd solutions in their my cloud system they are um, uh, the target audience for these systems are generally not someone with an in-house sys admin um with the options for the lesser powered systems, you could open ports on the router. This is a gamble if you do not know what you are doing and it should be considered the last of last results. Because at the very least when you're using third party services that may have an element of non-domain bounce traffic, um, and if they do invite you to open ports, at least then it will guide you through the process. It doesn't make it, you know, inherently completely safe. Very few things in this world are perfect. But if you start dicking around and opening the port, and this is Nick Gear's own guide, just bear in mind that you have to be precise about this and to monitor those ports quite significantly and make sure they are dedicated to this one point because you might be opening up a door into your network for invaders and particularly with NAS then you open the door to ransomware.
Now, when it comes to file sharing, from what I can see online, the most recommended options that people are going for, because I'll be straight with you, I'm going to have to trust them on this because I've not utilized uh, uh, Netgear's ReadyNAS OS for a little over two and a half years. It seems to be both OwnCloud and NextCloud being the best options there. Now, to the extent to which they are supported, I can't confirm because I don't have, unfortunately, a uh, ReadyNAS router or NAS here in my possession. But this seems to be the best option, and a lot of users are recommend utilizing in this in uh, some of these options in conjunction with a dynamic dns uh, which is going to be when your access to the device and your remote ip can change um, so utilizing those together will give you an element of stability but yet safety with that remote access and all you're really doing is utilizing the same sort of thing we saw here with ready cloud but you're kind of being forced to use two different uh, branches in order to manage the system or share files and even if you're using a router and you were thinking oh well, I've got a USB drive connected to that router I've got my old net Nighthawk X10 that will be fine just bear in mind that file sharing on there whether it's FTP or whatever is still going to require a file management or file sharing application like these and again some of these may come down depending on the uh, complexity and the ability of your device require you to use a, a docker application there uh, sorry a container application but just bear in mind you can look into the options readily available in their app center now what if you were on the verge of upgrading anyway. What if you were already thinking about, well, this WD now has served me well for a decade, but I've got to move up onward and upward. I don't want to go for bigger drives. I want to go for a bigger system. Well, it would be very difficult to make any kind of stark uh, recommendations for the entirety of the whole Netgear router and um, NAS series. Again, I'm going to focus on NAS because of the channel, but last month we produced this video here where I was talking about alternatives to WD. The reason I was talking about WD alternatives then was because WD was going through something of a PR nightmare for them with regards to being hacked, and even prior to that they were turning off some of the support of their older generation services, and there's definitely a feeling amongst a lot of WD NAS users that they are winding things down on their internal NAS stuff, um, definitely in the next few years and that seems like a lot of those users are going to be in the same boat as Netgear users looking to jump ship so do check out this video where I go through uh, each of the current available uh, NAS brands out there and that includes true NAS and Unraid as an open source alternative over DOI and what they bring to you in terms of an advantage for different users it's a long video but just use the chapters there on the bottom to find out which one's best for you alternatively there is an article linked in that very same video where I go through all of the different options and go through each of the brands and discuss their pros and cons and hopefully help you decide which one of those existing network attached storage brands is better suited to your configuration post netgear again you can go through it it's targeted at different users different brands different platforms and more so i recommend you check out that article but this has been the sad uh, end game that we're looking at here for netgear's ready cloud system are you affected by this have you got recommendations that other users can use to when they're migrating either away from the netgear platform or to continue using for the sake of sustainability and low cost to continue using their netgear router or nas in a recommended way that you've seen to work for you let everyone know in the comments i might put an article together for this uh, once again thank you so much jason for highlighting the um low time frame on this uh, that i was not aware of thank you for that email and other than that thank you so much for watching click like if you enjoyed the video subscribe to learn more there'll be links in the description to everything we talked about today along with other guides for network attached storage as well and use the free advice section and the free community support forum and the free discord community um, input there to help you choose the right solution for your needs they're all linked below but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time